Embracing the suck. Knowing when to push and when to pull back. Hey, it's Heather Chauvin, wife, mother of three boys, former social worker, breadwinner, recovering hustler, and stage four cancer survivor. I'm not a fan of that term, by the way. Beyond all of these titles and labels, I'm a human being, just like you, attempting to navigate it all while feeling good. My goal on this podcast is to show you that you can live an energized, sustainable life, both at home and in your work. It doesn't matter if you stay at home full time, if you work from home, you're a CEO, a a successful business owner, or trying to find some inspiration. On this show, I attempt to keep it real with stories, interviews, and random thoughts. This is not a business or career podcast, and it's not a parenting podcast. It's both and so much more. You will laugh. You may even cry. And you may even get a little frustrated with the truth you've been hiding from yourself. I believe all human behavior is a language, whether it's through your child's behavior your health, or a relationship. And when we learn to listen instead of react, we begin to understand what it truly means to feel alive and in control. It's time to put your big girl pants on and find your brave. Let's go. Okay, ladies, I am back. And today I want to talk, well, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday Q&A. And today I wanted to talk about self-sabotage because I get a lot of questions uh, from women all over the world, whether it's personal development, professional development, um, you know, talking about like, why don't I follow through? And there are many reasons why we don't follow through. But today specifically, I wanted to talk about when to push and when to pull back. So... If you buy into the masculine hustle, grind, you know, whatever, more pain, more gain, all of that attitude, typically if you're all in on that, you will burn out and your body is just going to shut down. And then there's the other side of it, which is this extreme feminine approach where a lot of non-action and not too much implementation is happening. And it's very, we're feeling, we're talking about our feelings, we're talking about what we want, but the integration isn't happening. So action itself, itself get you know the get shit done attitude is considered a masculine energy. And the feeling part, the nurturing part, the creative side is considered like the feminine approach. So I used to be, I wouldn't say extreme masculine. I can actually swing to both sides very easily. So there's this slight edge in the middle. This is where what I call, and I didn't make this saying up, but it's called grit and grace. You know, when things need to get done, I can push through. When my body, my mind, my life is requiring me to pull back and create ease and rest, I can do that too. But here's the thing. Because I have created and cultivated a lifestyle where, you know, I talk a lot about energetic time management, which is about managing your energy and not your time. Because this has become a lifestyle and I am so used to implementing my needs on a daily and weekly and monthly basis, I know typically that rest and restoration is not something that I need to do um, actively. I need to implement it, but I'm always filling that bucket and asking myself, what do I need? What do I need? What do I need? So the reason why I'm saying this is because this is where it gets tricky. You might be, you might hear in my voice, my voice sounds a little bit different. And if you've been following me for a long time, I've always had this unique relationship to my body and getting sick since I had cancer six years ago. And every time I would do uh, an event or a retreat, I used to get sick after all the time. 
And I always thought it was like an up level, right? So someone asked me the other day what up level meant and up level just means you're, you're, your body, your mind, your spirit are just releasing old patterns and letting go of shit that you no longer need. And so every time you're up leveling, sometimes your body gets sick. I didn't make this up. This is, um, you know, there's a lot of scientific proof behind this, but what happens is our brain is conditioned to believe that if we get sick, it's also, you know, Oh, I I can't push too hard. I'm going to get sick. And our fear sensors start to kick in. So that's what it used to do for me. So when I used to get sick, I would be like, oh, I got to back off, right? That's what you would think. You get sick, you take sick days, you relax, you restore, you do whatever you need to do. Well, did you ever think that getting sick can also be a form of resistance? So this is the intuitive part. This is where I so badly want all women to get in their life when they believe and trust in themselves enough to know not only what they need, but intuitively what is happening. So I know from trial and error when my body is playing tricks on me and when I need to push and when I need to relax. And so I'm going to tell you my story today, and then I'm hoping that you can compare it to yours and then find the middle ground that works for you. So my live event happened, oh gosh, February, oh, it feels like forever ago, but it was only a few weeks ago, February 4th to the 6th, 6th to the 8th, something like that. And so a few weeks ago, and I was so proud of myself because after I'm like, I feel great. You know, I, I'll have a few days to rest and restore, get back on track, recover, do all these things, right? But here I am. I could feel this cold coming on and I used to beat myself up and go, damn it. Like, what did I do? Like, I I felt like I was a failure because I got sick. But meanwhile, it's your body's way of just, you know, doing its thing. And we don't, well, my kids don't get sick a lot, but, um, I probably get sick more than people in my house, but I can tell that my immune system is really starting to recover. But when we are being so mean to ourselves and saying, Oh body, why did you get sick again? Like we're beating up our body. Like that's not kindness. So I could feel it coming on. I was paying attention enough. I wasn't pushing through. And so I started, you know, taking my herbal supplements and, um, just being extremely mindful, like extra hydration, paying attention to my exercise, like am I pushing too hard? Am I not pushing? Like just kind of intuitively, I was like, okay, my body's trying to get my attention. I'm just going to pay more attention to it. Like what does it need? What does it need? What does it need? And then I would get a little intuitive hit, like just drink more water, Heather, or, you know, do I need to walk today? Do I need to push? Now you might be asking, well, Heather, how the heck did you get to this place? I just had to listen to myself constantly and I had to take action and test. So sometimes, excuse me, sometimes I'd push too hard and then I'd realize, oh, that was me pushing. Sometimes I wouldn't push hard enough and then I'd go, oh, that was resistance. So it was this intuitive process of trial and error. So here I am today, annoyed with myself. This morning I wake up, I feel like a bag of garbage, complete garbage. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. But I also know that when I wake up and go to bed, typically just like our kids and humans, this is when we feel the shittiest, right? It's like your body's been laying down for all this time and all the toxins are just like sitting there. So you got to get them pumping and moving. But the hardest part is to actually get out of bed, right? So there's resistance. So I get up take a shower, trying to, you know, circulate my body, taking a cold shower, trying to, um, what do you call it? Dry brush my skin. I'm trying to drink fluids, just like get the blood pumping and nothing's happening. I'm just like, Oh my God, I feel like a bag of shit. And then I was like, wow, I feel like I'm getting a fever. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I was supposed to get something done. I didn't have a meeting. So my kids were off to school. I'm like, I'm going to take a quick nap. So I take a quick nap and then I get up and I'm like, wow, I feel like I'm feeling worse. So 
by process of elimination, knowing, you know, how my body has reacted in the past, I'm like, okay, so more sleep isn't necessarily making me feel better, right? But it could just be that my body's completely relaxing and now allowing, you know, all the sickness to come up and out. But I had things to do today. And yes, I could have been making up an excuse. And But like I do live in the real world where I have a family and I'm, you know, I'm the breadwinner and, you know, making magic happen in my life. If I was like puking my guts or shitting my pants, yeah, I would have taken the whole day off. But I didn't have a migraine. I was good. I just had small discomfort of this like low grade fever, but also uh, just feeling off. So I tested with myself because I wanted to find that slight edge. I wanted to find this place where I can take the action and follow through with the meetings that I had, but almost sandwich it with um, doing things that made me feel good. So I didn't drink coffee today. I had a lot of extra liquids, warm liquids. Um, Like I said, I took some extra herbal supplements. I probably had an ibuprofen. I don't fucking know what I did. But it just, I sandwiched it with things that made me feel really, really good. Took the shower, made sure I dressed in some clothes that made me feel decent. Put a little makeup on, made sure my hair was done and down. And I'm like, okay, now I knew that I needed to get outside of the house. Because if I stayed in my house, I would have one, probably wanted to stay in bed and work from bed, which would have not been good because I wouldn't have worked and my body just would be like, you're in bed, you're going to bed. And then when I was in my office, I'm like, I'm not feeling this either. So I had to put myself in new energy and a new environment. But again, ladies, I'm just testing, right? I'm curious and I'm saying, Is my body really, really sick and is it getting worse or is this just resistance? Because I am also taking specific actions right now that are uncomfortable for me. So my body can be making me feel sicker than I actually am as a state from a state of fear to keep me safe. So I go to the coffee shop, I have this immense resistance and I'm having this collaborative meeting with somebody on the computer and her and I are just going back and forth and we're both like, we're both resisting this, right? But we tell each other we're resisting this. And so we just keep creating together. By the end of that meeting, I felt so much better. I could feel it almost lifting and I was like, huh, this is really interesting So what that data was telling me is I was doing something that was in alignment with my bigger purpose, which was to work on this project. And because I was doing that and I got outside my, like my environment, which was more in alignment with how I wanted to feel going to a coffee shop, which is surrounded with people and good energy, um, that works for me. I actually work better in chaos. So, and loud noises and stuff like that, probably because I have so many children and animals around me. Um, So anyways, I did, I took the actions I needed to take to get into alignment. I did not allow my feeling, my emotion to control me, but I also didn't shove it down. So remember, it's not about feeling numb and powering through and pushing. So I invited it in and I was like, okay, great. What are you here to tell me? And I listened to it and I just kept moving forward. I still was moving at a slower pace today, but I was listening and still taking the action. And I wasn't really committed to the next thing on my calendar. I just kept one foot in front of the other. So then I had to go somewhere else and meet with somebody else. I followed through with that meeting. I still felt like a bag of garbage. But I started to feel a little bit better because, again, I was having like a nice intellectual conversation with this person and it brought me joy. And then I had on my calendar to go to the gym. I was supposed to go to the gym this morning. I didn't end up going in the morning because I kept pushing it back and back and back because I felt like a bag of shit. So rearranged some of the kids' schedules and I made it a priority. Now, this is where it gets good, okay? Old Heather would have said, I don't have time to go to the gym. I can't go to the gym. 
My children are going to be home. I can't do this. New Heather said, I'm going to go to the gym because this is adding more fuel to my bucket of how I want to feel in my life. And by me putting more fuel into that bucket, I am becoming the woman that my children need. So even though in the moment I was taking away 45 minutes, you know, hanging out with the kids or like being home for whatever reason, I don't know, to watch them do their homework or pick their nose, I removed myself and said, I'm going to go invest in myself. So by investing in myself and I went to the gym, I gave 10% today. You heard that correctly. I gave 10%. I didn't give 50%. I didn't give 100%. My goal was to show up at the gym, show up at the gym and simply just move. But by doing that, because what I typically would have done is my go-to was to not go to the gym and say, I don't feel good. But how many times am I going to say that? I'm going to say that tomorrow that I'm still recovering because my go-to, remember my go-to is to not go. If your go-to action is to go to the gym and push, 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 then most likely you need to do the opposite and take the day off. So doing the opposite of what I normally would have done throughout the entire day allowed my brain to rewire itself. But because I know that I'm in a cycle of resistance right now. I'm doing a lot of things that are making me incredibly uncomfortable. My body may be playing tricks on me and that I'm not actually as sick as I perceive myself to be. All day long, it was like, I have a fever. I don't have a fever. I have a fever. I don't have a fever. So I'm borderline. So I'm listening to my body and I'm pushing the boundary to say, are you playing tricks on me? So I went to the gym. I just, you know, like I said, light weights, I followed through with my routine and that was it. Came home and I am so grateful I went to the gym. I am so grateful and I'm proud of myself. So it wasn't even about, you know, burning those calories or looking good. I am so fucking proud of myself for just following through with a commitment that I had even though I originally wanted to do it at 5.30 in the morning and I didn't do it till 6 p.m. at night, the point is I didn't give up on myself. And then I came home and I had two or three things on my to-do list that had to get done today. And I did not want to do them. So I put a 20-minute timer on and I said, okay, what can I get done in 20 minutes? Just focus on this one task Focus on this one task, Heather. And I just fucking pounded it out. And guess what? After that one task was done, I felt better. So because I challenged myself today and I stayed in the energy of curiosity and I was just playing with it, like, let's see what happens. You know, in hindsight, looking at the day, I believe that my body was playing tricks on me. I believe that a lot of the symptoms that I was feeling today were based on resistance and not reality. So this is what happens when we have self-awareness around our emotion. This is what happens when you have the self-awareness around how your physical body reacts to fear, how your physical body reacts to stress. And how you want to feel in your life and the specific actions that you are creating space for to make magic happen. So this episode is about when to push and when to pull back. And this is really, you know, the answer is within you. A lot of people want to know a template, a tool, a blueprint, like Heather, give me the step by step by step. And when I do give them the step-by-step, they say, that doesn't work for me. And then I reply with, I know. So remember, what works for me will not work for you. But take what I say and make it your own. So do you need to push or do you need 
to rest. I'm curious. Let me know.